Can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth that you don't get anywhere by being poor? That takes money if you want to bless other people. Money is simply a tool, a test, and a testimony. Do you think it's easier with money? Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. Do you know some of the biggest negative comments I get on my YouTube channel? When we're talking about biblical principles about money, success, prosperity, advancement, there are people that are telling me, you are so wrong about money. The Bible doesn't say that about money. This and this and that. It's easier for a camel to get to the eye of a needle than a rich man in heaven. All these scriptures thrown at me and our audience, the Seven Figure Squad community, saying, you just better be content, chill, relax, don't worry about getting rich, don't worry about getting wealthy, take it easy. And then my team shares me with this video, spoken word. And by the way, I'm a big fan of spoken word. I did a spoken word here about a year ago about the George Floyd incident. If you want to check out that video here and what I said about the George Floyd incident, my spoken word here about that scenario. But I'm a big fan of spoken words. It's a great way to express, articulate, get it off your chest, and potentially inspire other people to consider your perspective about a particular situation. So when I'm looking at this, Sully Brick's video for the very first time about being poor is the root of all evil. I am genuinely curious about what Sully Brick's has to say. And by this, this is a nine year old video, so it's been around for a minute. So let's take a look at what Sully Brick's has to say about being poor is the root of all evil. Word is your bond, son, that's all you have. Is this John make Q? The movie John make Q? Money make money if you get a chance, even. You gotta sell out every once in a while. Okay, I, I, I think this is uh, the John Q movie where Denzel was, pay, uh, was playing a role of a father because his son couldn't afford proper health care and all the red tape of him not being able to get proper medical care. Um, I think this, this movie is also a shot to the medical care system, the healthcare system in America. Um, and the big reason why is because he didn't have the financial resources, he didn't have proper medical care, even though we live in the richest country in the world. Still couldn't get proper medical care, medical assistance for his son. Why? Lacking financial resources. Make as much money as you can. Don't be stupid like your father. Ooh. Everything is so much easier with money, son. Ooh. Everything is so much easier with money. I'm wondering, do you agree with that statement? Do you think it's easier with money? By the way, I've been in both sides of money. I've been broke and I've had millions. I can tell you this. If I'm going through problems and issues, I'd rather have money than without it. They said money can't buy you happiness. Sure helps though. But I met a poor man who wanted to be rich, but I've never met a rich man who wanted to be, to be poor. poor. Interesting point. To me, that would be the equivalent of a skinny person wanting to go on a diet. And before I give all you YouTubers fuel for your comments, let me address this real quick. Yeah, there are skinny people who diet, but they're known as anorexic, which is commonly regarded as an illness within society. Sure. But I digress. Yeah, I'm religious, but I never read anywhere where it said I'd be happy or poor in any of the scriptures. They told me money was the root of all evil. But I had no response when I asked, but wasn't money created by people? Matter of fact, in scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the love of success and wealth. It's the love of money that your world, your God, your idol is money. I completely agree with what he has to say, but there's nothing wrong. I just want to relieve you already at the beginning of this video. It's nothing wrong with you wanting to be wealthy. It's nothing wrong with you wanting to grow a business and it takes financial resources to do so. So there's nothing wrong with saying, listen, I need to be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire because eventually one day I need a financial resource to create a community center or give back to where I come from, the resource that I didn't have growing up in this community. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? It takes what? Money. If a farmer plants a seed and waters it, does he not take responsibility for his growth? Or would you now then not agree that you reap what you sow? But if you don't ever sow nothing, you can't reap anything. If you don't ever sow anything, you can't reap anything. My mother would say it best. Son, money can't buy you happiness. But neither can poverty. <laughs> That's true. This was even more apparent when I spent five days watching her struggling for breath on a hospital bed. 
Wishing I could afford doctors who could look after her better Or at least the place where the visiting hours didn't end at 8 Or at least the place where you had to be less observant Not to hear the Asian lady who with each cough sounded as though she was closer to death behind the next curtain To the point where my mum would look me in the eyes and tell me that she'd be following her soon she was certain Or at least I didn't have to work so late I only thank God she's still with us today you gotta get flowing, man. Money can't buy you happiness. Nope. But it bought the petrol which took us to court. Where we sat very unhappily and my sister wept. Cause we were only one lost piece of documentation away from being made homeless cause we could no longer afford to pay the rent. Ask the beggar if he's happy sleeping on the pavement. The shopkeeper only smiles. By the way, that, that, that last clip there with uh, Tom Cruise and uh, Jack Nicholas that's from the movie, A Few Good Men. I'm a United States Marine. I resonated with that movie. You can't handle the truth. That's what he was saying in that scene. Can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth that you don't get anywhere by being poor? Oftentimes people say, well, Jesus was meek. Listen, meek does not mean weak. Listen, Jesus had robes. He had garments. His first recruit of a disciple was an entrepreneur. Peter, he recruited an entrepreneur with boats and resources so he can conduct his ministry there in the Sea of Galilee. Consider that. Miles at the customer because he sees an opportunity for a payment. I asked my colleague what day of the week made him happiest just to see what he may say. His response was payday. Are you happy when the tax man requests his back? What about when you receive the letters full of bills from postman Pat? Or with your insurance, TV, phone bill, MOT and road tax? But I was told money starts remorse, divorce and discriminatory laws, chores, discourse and obligatory wars. Well, let me address that topic. Is money the root of all these problems or is the root of all these problems the lack of it? Now, please don't confuse me to be naive or believe that my life will be better because I can now afford a pair of jeans with Levi's stitched on the back pocket. You know, oftentimes when we're hiring or recruiting people, I run a national sales agency in the insurance industry. And uh, oftentimes we ask people, why are you considering coming involved in our field? Why are you considering getting an insurance? Why, why should we consider investing our time and resources working together with you? And we'd love to help you, but why? And oftentimes the answer is this, because I just want to be financially free because I just want to take care of my parents. I just want to swipe my credit card and not be worried whether or not the credit card charges go through and be embarrassed in front of my family, my date, the people I, uh, I'm in company with. I don't want to be embarrassed and have an overdraft charge and ask the bank back for my money. Can you give me uh, back some of my uh, overdraft charge that you erroneously uh, allowed my credit card to slide through so you can charge me bank fees? So oftentimes people are asking for that type of scenario, that type of reality in their life because their current job or their pursuit of how to accomplish it through a college degree didn't get them the dream or the goal that they're seeking out to do. And that's why they need to create some serious choices. Listen, you'd be a fool to think that what you're doing right now isn't because to get money to pay the bills, to put food on the table, put a roof over your, uh, your family, shelter, protection. You want your family, the people you love and care about to feel safe. Well, what provides all that? It's money. But I would most definitely be happier if I could afford to buy my family a house with that profit. Do not confuse human greed with human need. Oh, do not confuse human greed with human need. You know, uh, oftentimes people get shot down. I mean, my goals were, were, were in people's sights, still in people's sights, when I was getting up in business. And I remember family and friends, are you sure? Just get a regular job. I said, but listen, getting a regular job got majority of our family laid off. Getting a regular job uh, gets our family to not live in the places they want to live in. They live in these neighborhoods. I remember my cousins my, my, uh, being babysat by them growing up uh, in south side of Chicago, right there in Cicero Avenue, right behind the hotel. And we go in the backyard and we couldn't go out there for very long because in our backyard was an alley, garages, hotel, motel. And I saw all the pimps and all the drug lords and all, everybody going in and out of that hotel room. My family didn't want me to see all that to bring me back inside the house. Why? Because of lack of financial resources. But because they started to embrace money, they started embracing the rules of the money game, understand that man, Deuteronomy 8.18 says this, but remember the Lord your God, for he has given you the power to create wealth. You gotta understand where that power comes from and why he has given you such power. 
Don't confuse greed with me. People Amen. Go to war over oil because they want more. People kill the love because they feel they do not have enough. True. Anything. Money is the innocent party in all of this. Yeah, because money is simply a tool. You know, money is just an object to get you what we say in our last videos. Tools, testimony, and a test. Those three T's. Money is simply a tool, a test, and a testimony. It's not the inanimate object. So money is just supposed to allow you to get certain things. It's a tool. It's not the actual bill itself, the form of exchange itself. My verdict is that you can only judge the money is if the way a person earns it is dishonest or its uses is filthy. But all in all, sat in front of a jewelry, wouldn't that make the user of the money rather than the money? By the way, side note, that, movie, that clip was from the movie um, American Gangster, where uh, Frank Lucas took over the Italian mob. And nobody knew who's ran an Italian mob after the Italian mob boss died. But Frank Lucas was the first uh, uh, African-American running an Italian mafia as a black man because he shadowed his mob boss. So the reason why I share that is because oftentimes when people are, are growing up or they want to follow a certain path, they don't have the opportunity or look for the opportunity to shadow somebody, to shadow somebody that's wealthy, to shadow the language of somebody that's wealthy, to shadow and listen to the negotiations and the conversations and the relationships of somebody that's wealthy has established. A lot of people who are, don't have money, don't have resources, don't have poor, they don't listen and or look for those type of conversations and you should. Because if you seek those conversations and you actually listen into it, you can actually see, for the most part, how generous and giving wealthy people are. Now, there's greedy people, wealthy people, there's, there's very nasty wealthy people that they don't blanket, though, the whole entire population of people who are wealthy, who are millionaires. Guilty. Think about it. You know, the preacher left the mosque telling us that we didn't need to be rich and money shouldn't trouble you as he adjusted the Rolex watch on his wrist and stepped into his new BMW. Hmm. Charlie, how many guys remember that, uh, uh, that video? Charlie to these two brothers. I was never Hang unhappy out. as a child, although we weren't the richest. Because my mother and he my dad my did finger, their best Mom. to keep up Charlie their Charlie bit my finger. But what I always wondered was, did not knowing how they were next going to provide for their children ever make them happy as parents. But if you grew up in Wood Green, you would truly understand. Because round here we never had no role model who was a rich woman or man. But you know what I did notice quite sadly? It was always the broke people who ever said shit like, look how much money he has but is he truly happy? Well, unless you're looking through some other eyes, from where I'm standing, I have no reason to believe otherwise. I know nobody goes to school for all these years just so they can emerge as a happy student. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, why are people, why are people, why are they sold on going to college? It's to get money. Majority of people that are sold to go to college, so therefore they can be advanced and more marketable to have a college degree. So therefore, in a selection process of multiple resumes, they will naturally, hopefully, be selected because they have a college degree. So the real reason for most people that go to college is to what? Advancement to get that college degree. So therefore, they can make more money. So they can be the one chosen out of a pile. So don't think that people don't do things for money. Everybody, most people, they do a lot of things in their life because of money. By the way, that's where the sin can exist if it's only about money. <laughs> then they'll claim, look at all these celebrities that have money and they're unhappy. Well, let me be clear about it. I'm sure there's just as many unhappy broke people, but you just don't hear about it. For sure. Money is the medium by which earthly success is measured. Or maybe success is measured by how many people you bless. I don't know. But I know money is the reason. By the way, what do you guys think? Do you think that's success? is about the money you make or the amount of people you bless. Okay, so if you agree with the latter, let me ask you this question. How do you mobilize blessing more people? It takes money. It's called advertising, it's called marketing, it's called campaigning, it's getting out on the road, it's shaking more hands. That takes money if you want to bless other people. Is the reason Africa has a lot of respect for Bono I'm sure he's blessed a lot of people. 
and they'll say that we shouldn't chase money and make us feel like it's a desire of the pagans but then after the prayer they ask for our donations is it the fear of failure that leads us to believe the desire for wealth is wrong money can't buy you love agreed true but don't you love those around you to want to provide them with everything that they need yeah and i'm not advocating loving by the way for those of you watching this if you want to elevate your financial game what's your reason by the way put it in the comment section below i want to elevate my money game because i want to elevate my money game because put your because put your why in the comment section below. i would love to know the mindset and the viewers of the seven fear squad youtube channel for this particular video why do you want to get wealthy i want money because right what is your why in loving money because only a fool would love an object that can't love him back but if you love those around you would you not persevere in your means to make their living better and money is just an object don't blame it for anything it's merely a tool so it won't solve your problems unless you learn not just how to make it but rather make it work for you because <laughs> at the end of the day even michael went broke and that's what i believe yeah by the way check out this episode i did on wgn news about the, michael jackson's estate and what he left over uh when he sadly when he died i think he had something like four hundred thousand dollars left in his bank account which to the magnitude of the money he's actually made. It's like you and I having five, 10 bucks left over in our wallet. But uh, by the way, thank goodness though, he uh, had ownership. He bought ownership of Sony, I think it was uh, Sony Records, BMG, I think that's the, the, the catalog with Jonas Brothers, the catalog with the Beatles. Could you imagine the amount of royalties that still come to his estate because of his ownership in that, in that catalog, the copyright ownership that has it? Because at least one move he did was to purchase that catalog from Sony. This is only my view. And like any view, one-sided it is. Cause it's that of a broke man. Hopefully this is only part one. And I can hit you up with the other side of it when I get rich. Peace, God willing. Man, powerful piece here, man. Sully, Sully, is it Sully, 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 Sully? Sully, phenomenal work, man. Continue to do more of this type of stuff. Last time you did this was uh, nine years ago. I'm going to continue to check out your YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to Sully's YouTube channel here. We'll put the description and the links in the description below. But I want to know what you're thinking is about money. Because so many people divide about this situation. You know, uh, just to wrap up here, I print out a couple of my favorite scriptures as results to wealth building. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. A lot of people remember the pack half of that scripture, which is the borrower is servant to the lender, but they forget the front half, which is the rich rule over the poor. And there's always going to be poor people, and it's your choice to rise up. And thank God I, you know, we, we got a situation here in, in the United States of America. We have entrepreneurship. We've got capitalism, the right type of capitalism. We got free enterprise. Thank God we have opportunity to have titles and deeds and ownership. And obviously, for those who are Bible-based and faith-based, it's also stewardship that allows us to do what we do. Um, Another one here, uh, Proverbs 28, verse 20. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but whoever hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. Remember, be faithful in all that you do. Watch what happens. Proverbs 28, verse 19 says, Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. What have you been pursuing? Have you been pursuing this and that and this and that? Or have you been working what God has given you in your hands? Have you working with what's in your backyard? Are you working with the original talents and gifts or are you disrupted with the shiny object mentality? Figure out what is your gift, figure out what is your talent and work your land. And by the way, when I got involved in the insurance industry, I didn't realize that was my land. I never wanted to get involved in the insurance industry. I never thought in a million years I'd be an entrepreneur in the insurance industry. I was a door gunner in the Marine Corps for crying out loud. I thought I'd be working on helicopters or an aircraft or working security uh, uh, overseas security forces, something like that. Never a million years that I think I, I would get involved. So in the doing of it, in the pursuit of you finding it, find that one thing, find out what that one land is, find out what that one gift, that one opportunity being sent your way and make the most of that one thing, work your land. And so, sometimes people don't work their land because they, they find this land, this little plot, this little plot, this little plot, and boom, 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 boom. And then never get hunkered down and settle into one thing. I've been working in one industry for 22 years. Sure, there's been a lot of opportunities. Sure, I lost people to this. Sure, I lost people to that. But I stayed in one thing. And by the way, the people I lost to other things, they get shit around to other things too as well. They never work their land. And I see their results and I see my results. And I see long term who's been winning if you have 
a long-term perspective of your pursuit of financial freedom, happiness, and prosperity. With that being said, guys, I wanna know your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. You agree with some of the things I had to say? Disagree with some of the things I had to say? I'd like to know. Place them in the comment section below. What about with Sully here? Did you agree with his spoken word? His interpretation of being poor is a root of evil? of being poor is a root of all evil. I'd love to know in a comment section below too as well. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.